Hello, my name's Mike M Zero MSN, and um, well, you join me uh, halfway through the build of an ATAS uh, controller. Now, there's a, a long reason why I wanted to build an ATAS controller, um, uh, rather than the fact that I actually don't need to, because I actually do have a couple of Yaesu uh, radios that with with ATAS controller on them. Um, but uh, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to put my ATAS on the back of the car, that's the ATAS 120 Alpha, on the back of the car and perhaps put a different radio in the car rather than the, the ASU, for instance, my Kenwood or perhaps even an ICOM radio um, to cover HF 2N70. Um, but I really don't have a, a shack in the box uh, any longer apart from my um, 57 Alpha D or what, what is it? It's a uh, an 857D. Uh, I still have that one. Uh, and uh, unfortunately it has developed a, another slight fault where um, it doesn't detect um, the SWR any longer. So it still drives the ATAS antenna, but doesn't, uh, doesn't stop when it reaches the lowest SWR point. Could get it fixed, perhaps even could fix it myself, but it's not that important. OK, um, so anyway, I was thinking uh, and speaking with um, John uh, CQX, that's uh, Golf 8 CQX, um, about an ATAS controller and whether it would be something that I could uh, create or perhaps something that uh, we could create together and uh, uh, to allow people or myself or whomever to be able to have a ATAS antenna um, on the back of their car um, and control it with a little controller so they could use any any rig. John has created the uh, the circuit uh, diagram. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll wind back a little bit from that because the reality is we looked on the internet and found a website that actually uh, has um, the circuit diagram from a couple of people uh, and quite a good experiment and I will uh, put in the comments below uh, or in the description of the video below the the actual name and um, the, the website uh, so I thank that gentleman completely um, and what we've done is we've lifted the the circuit diagram um, and we've drawn it ever so slightly uh, and created um, a couple of PCB boards um, and um, we're gonna well I'm going to uh, solder all the components on put it together and see if we can actually make it work now uh, just to let you know this is not an RF sensing uh, board this is purely a manual up and down switch type uh, arrangement for the ATAS um, and it has got a couple of quirks but it works in, in, in reality and in general it works quite well and this video really is all about doing it, creating the boards, putting it all together and uh, the finished product. Well, hopefully we'll see at the end. By the way, a full list of components can be found in the description below. And also if you pause on the circuit diagram, you'll also see um, the values of the components. Um, I've got most of this stuff from Fennel in the, the UK, but the RS components also carry the, the same componentry. Right, I'm not sure that you're going to see any of this, to be perfectly honest with you. But we'll have a go. We need C8, C4, C6, I think C6 is one, two, yeah, C4, and C7. Here we go, C5. many hours later, and I mean many hours later, yeah, C5 and we started good. soldering this at around about uh, five o'clock in the evening. It's now nearly nine o'clock indeed, my goodness. So... Right, uh, for those of you who've got a keen eye, you'll notice that the voltage regulators don't fit the board. I've had to bend, if I can get this on camera, I've had to bend the, uh, might be out of there, 
the legs around so that they tuck underneath them and then there was no pad for me to solder to so what I've done is I have soldered the centre leg from the, to the uh, to the ground on this one, and that's then soldered actually to the pad using the uh, the leg I've soldered to it. So it's not brilliant. So this is only a prototype. So that's the good thing. Um, and uh, the next stage really uh, is to populate the C7. Um, and the the pinout boards. Um, this is the RF in. That is RF out. This bottom one. This will carry the voltage to the um, to the antenna. Well, we haven't tested it yet. So I guess that's the next thing to do. But that will be tomorrow. Well, it's getting there, isn't it? Just need to put a SO239 on that end and an SO239 on that end and uh, we'll see uh, if it will work. Very crude setup here. I'm just going to use a couple of crocodile clips to attach the um, multimeter probe to the end of the uh, PL259 um, so that I can test to see if the uh, unit is uh, outputting the correct voltages uh, for the ATAS120A. So bear with me. Twelve volts. Eight volts. It works. Let's uh, put a proper end on this, or we'll put a proper antenna on it, and see if it puts it up and down. Excellent. Although the unit works to supply uh, power, um, I'm afraid it. Uh, doesn't represent very good SWR. The uh, the RF path is obviously not uh, as good as I'd hoped. Um, I may have to change that. Okay, bit of fun. Um, if I tune out of band, uh, by the way, this is on a dummy load, so it's not transmitting outside. There, um, but just out of curiosity, um, what's the SWR meter? Um, just make sure we're on some weird wonderful frequency. Right. Yeah. Put one four. Okay. And that is on one three nine. Now if I go up the band to I don't know one forty two hundred. It's starting to creep up now, look. Point three eight. If I go to one forty four. Oh. Okay, so I need to either put a never capacitor in there, a slightly higher value, or reduce the capacitor value in there. Basically, I need to put a little matching circuit in to make that happy. Um, right guess that's the next thing to do then. Interestingly, by adding, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, maybe six puff um, of uh, 
uh, yeah, six puff maybe. Um, I've reduced the SWR to 1.02. Uh, this is obviously a matching stub, um, but that is at 139.55 or 0 0.055. Um, it has come down a little bit on the AM bands, but uh, not brilliantly. So I'm guessing I need a matching circuit. So uh, I think that's the next stage is to see if I can change the capacitor that um, separates uh, these two. I wonder what it would like if I linked it and took it out completely, whether or not this is actually just causing the grief. Uh, that's the next stage and we'll, we'll see. It's all a bit of fun. So what I ended up doing actually was building a complete new unit um, I started again from scratch and rebuilt with a new box, um, separated the uh, uh, the SO 239s by a little bit more, so there's a little bit more room to work with, and then completely rebuilt the circuit. Okay, just a quick look, see what we've done. Can I turn this a little bit more? By the way, blue tech, an amazing substance. Right. So here's our little circuit. Um, this is so small, what I've had to do is use some um, resistor leg wire uh, to attach to the outer braid because uh, you, you just can't make it uh, tidy enough. So center core goes to the center pin. Uh, a little wire goes to the braid. This stuff is um, is made of, I forgot what the material is now, but you can't melt it. It's pretty damn good. Um, and then it's the same again on the circuit board. Um, I don't know if you can see it, if I get it in the light perhaps. But what I've done is peeled back the um, braid and then soldered a, a resistor leg to the braid and then into the circuit board because that's the only way I could do it. And again, on the input, there's two resistor legs um, if I had some small wire, I probably would have used that, but I didn't, so I've, I decided to sacrifice a small resistor. Um, and then we've got our power lead, which I shall put some power cables on in a minute, and our free core for the switch. Um, right, so we have a 12 volt regulator, a 8 volt regulator, a 100 um, micro Henry um, inductor an array of capacitors as um, detuners and also as a DC block so that I can connect that to a radio. I don't know if it's gone SWR yet, but we're gonna test that in a few moments. But at the moment, that's all looking relatively good in our nice uh, 3D printed box. Anyway, right, next stage. Okay, let me just show you what I'm doing. We've got the Retivus C1. Um, on, I don't know what frequency it's on, let's have a quick look, it's on 144.125, we'll change it in a minute. That gets fed into the uh, SWR meter, which is a, just a standard analog SWR meter. That goes round into the input of our um, ATAS controller, um, crudely built, but here you are, whatever. Um, that goes then out on our red little cable, it goes round and into a 100 watt dummy load, which is an MFJ job. But it doesn't make a difference, it is what it is. And what we're trying to do is test SWR. So this is set at the moment to SWR 15 watt range. This output's around about five to six watts. And we will transmit on 125, and our SWR is low which is good. Right, let's take it up to... 18, 20, 2, 30, 9, 40, 8, 50, 2, 50, 60, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 4, 80, 80, 80, 80, 9. Close enough. And the SWR is the same, doesn't move, which is really good. Okay happy with that. Now I need to introduce some electricity. <laughs> um, 12 volts, 13.8 volts. 
DC and to see whether or not our circuit actually outputs the correct voltage. And then what I'll do is I'll mount a SO239 mount there. Um, and I'll get the ATAS down and see if we still operate the ATAS. So far, so good. Okay, so this is basically what it's all been about. It's all been about the ATAS 120A, uh, which is what's in this box. Um, so, so basically the idea is that this little circuit here uh, on top of this mount can drive the motor on this ATAS up and down. Anyway, let's put it together. Okay, here we go. Not very scientific. I haven't got the uh, tether on fully. Um, basically, it's on a quick um, gutter mount, which I've just pinned to my desk using a, a clamp, as you can see. A uh, bit of coax going into this unit I've just built. I've got no feed, so there's no antenna going in. I just want to test to see if, if uh, I can power it or not. So anyway, here's the power supply, moment of truth. Let's hope I don't blow up the antenna. I'm hoping I won't. Um, let me just find the cable. So here's the little switch. It's a lovely place. Well, here it is. It's the, uh, I guess it's the final product. Um, it's a little uh, black box, which I'm gonna cover with some um, aluminium um, foil. It's a proper um, sticky back foil. That will make it uh, RF proof, hopefully. Okay, here we go. We have the uh, power supply going into our little ATAS box. We have the little switch here. Magic. So as you can see, it's all working perfectly and as it should. However, the next logical step would be to make it RF sensing so that when you changed bands, you key up and the antenna uh, would be driven to the right uh, point uh, of SWR so that you could use that uh, that band without having to flick a switch or, or do something else like that. Now, I was looking into this and wondering where we would go. Um, however, I came across uh, this on the uh, on the internet in um, AliExpress, actually. Um, and for the price, I have come to the conclusion that there's not much point in me going forward with this as a project. Um, the reason being is that uh, the development time um, and the uh, the costs of components, boxes, etc., so on and so forth, would probably exceed that in which I can actually buy an already finished product. So there we are. Um, I've decided to buy one of these uh, boxes to see uh, how they work and if they're any good or not. And I'll report back uh, to you on that box when I get it. But um, for now, at least, that's the end of the video. So thanks very much for watching. Cheers for now. Bye-bye. Magic.